This is Victory Circle, the end of a seemingly infinite road. Paradise found, the throne of a newly crowned king of stock car racing, though it be just for a day. This is Buddy Baker, every cell of his strapping six foot five inch, 225 pound frame alive. A time when a young son doesn't ask, Daddy, why didn't you win? A time treasured more than the $20,000 check he receives for winning a super speedway classic in the toughest league in the nation, NASCAR's Grand National. The rewards for fighting a 4,000-pound, 650-horsepower automobile on a 500-mile journey at blistering speeds. A celebration denied so many, reserved for so few. The man's got to move. The man's got to go. Buddy Baker, son of Margaret Hatchell Baker and Elsie Wiley Baker, for more than a quarter of a century, known as Buck. Now the oldest active stock car driver in NASCAR. Buddy almost makes it to Victory Circle, his first race. A preliminary heat in a soapbox derby in Charlotte, North Carolina. Born January 25th, 1941, in Florence, South Carolina, Elsie Wiley Baker Jr. is following in the tracks of his famous father, climbing to the top in the country's fastest growing professional sport. Though the 30-year-old Baker has the advantage of maturing during the infant years when the sport is like a wild kid on the block, as a youth of eight, he fears car racing with an intense passion. When they made me go to the racetracks, uh, I'd think of any excuse and every excuse to keep from going because it made me real nervous to watch racing when I was small and uh, when they crank up the cars and all, I turn my back to the racetrack and stick my fingers in my ears and I probably cared less for racing when I was a kid than anybody. But as Baker matures, he begins to feel the urge and the quiet demand to become a race driver like Dad. He begins to help his father in his Charlotte garage. At 18, Young Baker musters enough courage to ask his father if he can drive a race car, and his father graciously and proudly consents. For eight years, he competes against the best in independently sponsored and often experimental and inferior equipment. Although winless in 42 races in 1965, he finishes among the top five a dozen times and earns $25,000. However, in 1966, he makes the most significant and difficult decision in his racing life. Buddy Baker leaves his dad's operation and accepts the invitation of Ray Fox to drive his Dodge. Fox is a car builder with the skill of a surgeon and the temperament of a lion. In six months, Baker drives the Fox Dodge into victory circle. Unlike most drivers, Baker's first triumph in the National 500 miler at Charlotte Motor Speedway is a major victory. It's instant success and a family reunion, especially with his father. A tearful embrace, warm expressions of deep admiration and respect, fulfillment of a challenge for Buddy, a revelation for a proud father. But the road to victory circle is eight years long. And once there, getting back is almost as hard and frustrating. Baker quickly learns that each season and each race are a new challenge and experience. This is Petty Engineering in the Farm Ridge, Piedmont area near Randleman, North Carolina. It is commanded by Lee Petty, retired three-time NASCAR Grand National Champion and father of Richard. NASCAR's all-time race and money winner. It is a farm that produces race cars. From these many times expanded shops roll racers as powerful and durable 
as safe and violently beautiful as any other garage in the country. Here, Baker's Dodges and Petty's Plymouths are converted by craftsmen with more total experience than any other racing team. They are checked and rechecked, tuned and retuned by the most modern technology. Baker is the newest member of the Petty team, having been selected by Chrysler Corporation to drive the only factory-backed Dodge in the 1971 season. Preparing a racer is a tedious and laborious task, requiring endless hours to get ready for the first major race of the 1971 season, the 500 at Daytona Beach, Florida. Daytona International Speedway, the fastest two and a half mile closed racing course in the world. Baker is looking for his first win under the mild pressure of proving to the Petties and envious rivals that he deserves the factory sponsored ride. And he also wants to determine whether the carburetor restrictor plate required on the 426 cubic inch Hemi engine is a handicap in competition with the fast Ford products and their 427 wedge engine carrying a three-quarter inch smaller plate. This plate restricts air and fuel flow according to Venturi size. How impressive it would be to win the first time out in the petty car, to beat the boss man who has a record two wins here, to carry that $40,000 back to Charlotte. The competition is as keen as it will be all season. The Mercury number 21, built by the renowned Wood Brothers, is on the pole after turning the tri-oval at nearly 183 miles an hour. Behind the wheel is A.J. Foyt, three-time Indianapolis 500 champion, and by most estimations, the most versatile driver of them all. Bobby Isaacs Dodge, the red number 71, is also in the 180 mile an hour class too. Baker qualifies the white Dodge, wearing the new number 11, four and five tenths of a second faster than Petty in the famed Blue Plymouth number 43. They start fourth and fifth. Now they're off on the lightning light journey. Foyt bursting into the lead, but Baker takes it as a personal challenge to catch him. The equal machines glide through the turn. Buddy finally takes the lead, but Foyt hooks on to his tricky draft, riding in the Dodge slipstream. The wreck brings out the caution, and the leaders duck into the pits. One of the hardest things that uh, a driver has to experience is changing from 200 miles an hour to a safe speed coming into the pits, it's real easy to come in too hard and overshoot your pits. You come in the pits and you feel like you're almost stopped and you're running better than 150 miles an hour down pit road. So uh, you really have to use your brakes and your experience and depth perception. They're off again and Foyt leads the pack. It's evident immediately he commands the fastest of the three cars. But Baker and Petty hook onto Foyt in the tricky draft. The three cars stage a blistering duel, pushing the tack needle nearly to the red line. But Foyt is having a problem. He's slowing, almost coasting into the pits. His swift machine is out of gas. Although the Woods are the fastest pit crew in the business, Foyt is losing precious time in the pits for his fuel and the balky restart. It's either Petty or Baker. It's going to the final laps. Petty has won the Daytona 500 for the third time. One position away from victory circle, Baker is visibly disappointed, though the Petty team is one and two. I felt uh, very proud that uh, the first trip out in the car that uh, we did run first and second. When you take two cars to a 500 mile race and uh, both of them run flawless as far as mechanical problems or anything like that, we were very delighted. We left Daytona with a big grin, I'll tell you. Man's got to move. Man's got to go. Man's got to move. Man's got to go. But there is some time for fun, if you can call it that. Big 11's been moving all day. 
Now to find an easier way Grab that bike, you're the boss Although you might have lost Baker says this bit of acrobatics with his mechanic, Richie Bars, is strictly for Man's conditioning gotta, and relaxation. Man's gotta go. Man's gotta move. The man's gotta go. You have to have something if you can get completely away from racing. Driving a race car is a complex thing. You have to devote your whole life into it. On a motorcycle, I can become totally involved. I really enjoy it. It's a, it's a time in my life that I can get away from racing. Buddy eagerly anticipates the next race, for he is a charger, and chargers run up front, even in qualifications. But often, the quest for the pole can be as frustrating as the race itself. The finest machinery put together by skilled hands and minds often balks, handles like a tractor, runs as if it's tied to a post, a favorite expression of Buddy's, a gift of gab inherited from his dad. Before qualifying for the Carolina 500 miler at scenic North Carolina Motor Speedway in Rockingham, Baker encounters problems. He is here after another depressing second place to fight and the wood mercury in a 500 miler at New Ontario Speedway in California. The car is not handling on the high banked high speed mile and the engine has a skip Experience and modern technology go to work seeking the trouble. There is also a strong suspicion after Daytona and Ontario that the Ford products equipped with a 427 wedge engine rates 40 to 50 more horsepower than the 426 Hemi in Baker's Dodge. Richie Bars and the crew launch a new offensive to find ways of compensating for the plate. Handling and chassis setup can be the equalizers but they aren't. I probably qualified as bad as anybody ever. Uh, I think I qualified 10th the first day, and uh, had I been a horse, the bridle wouldn't have fit any part of my body, because I guarantee you my head was really long that day. Yet 500 miles on a speedway, a fraction over a mile in length, 492 laps renders the pole insignificant. Only the prestige of showing adversaries the fastest car is lost. The Wood Brothers car is not entered at Rockingham, a major competitor eliminated. Although the Wood Brothers car isn't here, there's plenty of competition and fierce competitors in this race. Petty and Fred Lorenzen, both in Plymouth, start the race with a blistering pace. Buddy lays back, trying some new strategy, but he keeps the leaders in sight. Baker manages to put the Dodge out front, dueling Petty, Bobby Isaacs Dodge, and Fred Lorenzen's Plymouth. Five times for 200 laps, the field gives chase to Buddy. But it just isn't his day, and neither is it for the less fortunate. The wreck brings out the caution, and the leaders duck into the pits. Baker is undecided about stopping. If he doesn't pit, he might win. But the crew and tire engineers believe his tires are dangerously worn. Baker stops and the tires are blistered, but he waits a few seconds too long. The race is under green when he returns. Well, I just made a mistake that cost me a 500 mile race. When you return to the racetrack and the greens come out after a pit stop and you've lost over half a lap to the leaders, there's no way to make it up before the race is over. Man's got to move. Man's got to go. Isaac takes second as Petty streaks under the checkered flag. Buddy is third. To the top you try to reach. Losing is the only way to teach. Facing the crowd's no fun. But try to face your own sons. The Atlanta 500 is equally demoralizing to Baker. Foyt is back in the Wood Brothers Mercury and absolutely dominates the race over the one and a half mile super track from the green flag.
Foyt is so fast, he takes Baker and Petty by three car lengths down the quarter mile chutes and doesn't lose much ground through the yawning half mile turns. Petty manages to keep Foyt in sight, but Baker's car is not handling. The chassis setup is wrong. Everything I uh, touched went wrong. I come in the pits one time a little too hard and uh, actually spun the car out running about 30 miles an hour. So it was just, uh, uh, to say the least, the worst day of the year. But it's not as hot as Neil Castle's Dodge. Foyt leads Petty across the checkered flag. Baker's sixth place finish takes him out of the top five for the first time this season. Surely his misfortune will change in the Rebel 400 miler at Darlington Raceway, sprawling in a one-time cotton field near the small town of Darlington, South Carolina. It's the oldest of the super speedways. A treacherous monster, one and three-eighths miles of black snake. Baker has reason to be reassured. This is where he cut his teeth, on a big track, where in 1959 his father admonished him as the poorest excuse for a race driver he had ever seen, where he spun and wrecked in the oil of his dad's blown engine, accepting his dad's challenge to come out on the track and let me show you how to get around this place where Buck Baker has won three Southern 500s, the most prestigious stock car race of them all. Buddy Baker finally conquered the old witch, winning the Southern 500 in 1970 in a Cotton Owens Dodge, a triumph that made his season, along with his world speed record of 200.447 miles an hour, set in a successful bid to become the first stock car driver to crack the 200 mile an hour barrier. It came to pass at the Alabama Speedway in that same Owens-built dodge. I really felt confident all week. I think it showed up in everything I did. And my car ran uh, extra well. I got around the racetrack real well. All along the whole week, I felt that I was going to win. Although the one groove third and fourth turns are wider, Darlington still retains the reputation of taking from the rich to pay the poor. Confidence is a trait of a driver with nearly 300 races behind him over 12 years. But any overconfidence on Baker's part is quickly dispelled by the ominous presence of the menacing Wood Mercury, with Donnie Allison replacing Foyt in the cockpit. Man's got to move. Man's got to go. Allison plants the car on the pole for the fifth time. Darlington is the hardest of all. In this, the best do fall. The magic circle is the place to be. But it takes time to find the key. As expected, Allison launches the colorful spectacle by roaring out front with Baker and Petty in hot pursuit in the 293 lap grind. Petty glues the Plymouth to Allison's bumper and becomes a shadow. Baker is third in the early stages, lacking the steam to overtake Allison. Trouble! Petty's in trouble! Richard Petty caught on fire right in front of me and spun right down into the infield. And then I knew if uh, the Petty Enterprise cars were going to win, it was up to me. Richard's all right, but the Plymouth is through. Man's got to move. Man's got to go. Baker closes the gap in second place. There's a car spinning. Nobody hurt, but one more hope of victory going behind the wall and one less risk off the track. Allison! 
Allison and Baker pick. Donnie is out first. Buddy wants four new tires. He's got them smoking at this terrific pace. He plays catch up, gunning his dodge in a feverish effort to regain the lost ground. 12 laps from home. Buddy's a soft spoken guy. Man, he can make his car fly. Now he's fighting for the lead. How he loves the speed. Allison, with Petty out, is home free if his car doesn't falter. He sees nothing in his mirror but the imposing grill of Baker's white dodge. The torrid battle rages. The crowd of 40,000 is on its feet. Hearts pounding, nerves jangling. But the drivers must remain cool. One mistake, one miscalculation at this pace is an invitation to disaster. They streak and wind through ever menacing traffic. Allison is slowing down. There's something wrong. Hope turns to anxiety and then to despair for the wood crew. Without warning, the engine dumps its insides. Allison pushing his car to the limit, staving off Petty, then Baker for more than 200 laps, is finished. Buddy cannot relax. Victory is within his grasp. But a million things can happen. A slow car can spin in front of him, causing him to wreck. The engine could spew. All the misfortune that has beset him before weighs heavily on his mind. There's a silent prayer. He breaks out in a cold sweat. Two laps to the end of the road. I never will forget as I come by with two laps to go. Uh, there was a feeling inside of me that uh, the car was just going to quit. I could hear every noise imaginable. I just had no idea that I was going to make it another uh, two laps around the racetrack. At last, there's the raised arm. Unmistakable sign of triumph. The checkered flag. A sigh. The unwinding of taunt and tattered nerves. Buddy Baker is back in victory circle, $17,000 richer after just five tries in 1971. The second time in less than a year. Enviable back-to-back -back triumphs at Darlington. In victory circle with wife Colleen, who has followed him faithfully through thick and thin for 11 years, and the young sons, Brian and Brandon. When they walk into victory circle and they're standing there and and the uh, flash bulbs are going off and the people are cheering you on. And it's something that uh, there's no money in the world that could ever pay you for the satisfaction of that. Darlington is the hardest of all. Isn't this the best to fall? The magic circle is the place to be. But it takes time to find the key. Back in Victory Circle, where every stock car driver wants to be. The man's got to move. The man's got to go. The man's got to move. The man's got to go. Racers with the skill, determination, guts, lust for speed, pride, and the dreams of a Buddy Baker. <laughs>